Aaron, this is an ex exciting day. Let's. This is an exciting day, Dave. So oh. we have on us a vintage pair of Stanzioni skates, exact same time period, exact same blade. You know, I can't say exact same skates, but basically almost a perfect replica of that time period that Sonia is wearing right here in this image. What is your favorite thing about Sonia? Well, Sonia, basically everything that she know, knew and loved lived at World Figure Sport. She knew, she was a master of all the beautiful figures. She was a master of costuming. She was a master of the fine art of skating in every way, and even made sure her movies were on black ice, just like the World Figure and Fantasy Skating Championship. Now, Sonia is a controversial figure, like all great stars. Yes. Yes, of course. Imperfect well, as we all are. Absolutely. But, but what, you know what? She embodied and pushed the elements of greatness in all genres that she ever knew. And so, you know, we try to push ourselves in a functional manner through gratefulness and perspective, mind you. But literally, just in her foot line and just in her all of her costuming and everything she does, you know, we're pushing the elements and also studying all this. Because these booths, people think, oh, you know, you can't skate in something like this. But what was interesting about Mr. Stanzioni is he knew how to stabilize the foot bones. So and this is never talked about today. Today, if you're skating in a, an entire plastic boot, you, the whole thing is plastic. So here, the foot bones are released in a certain point and stabilized in others. He was a master of anatomy of the so foot. So were her feet stronger because they had to... Her feet were strong, okay, but also her skates were... Um, how can I say, perfected for her line and also through the pointing of that foot and being able to flex and point fully in your boots and blades, it did make your foot stronger, okay, but you also had to take time to develop the correct being on a keen edge. Well, she's known for more than being just on an edge, Karen. Oh, no, very much so. How about how she runs on her on toe, toe picks? picks? Yes, and these are the exact same blades, the Olympiad blades that she ran on her toe picks. Have you ever tried running on toe picks? Well, yes, I, I well, not in these skates, though. I mean, these are can, put can on you only do it? special occasions. I will do my best. God help me. <laughs> you know, I mean, what is your favorite Sonia movie? Like, what's your favorite skating well, scene? You know, there are just so many in um, Sun Valley Serenade and many other, other no. ones. I mean, you're just, wrong. You know, no, I really, I was watching the Sonia Henny documentary with Shepard Clark, yeah. as one does. And when she comes out on the stairs in yes. this outfit, it's a little bit, and she's shaking it uh -huh. on her toe picks. I think that's a star. <laughs> that's a skating yes, star. She's a star. So, I mean, I will do my best to do a song. Yeah, so this cost, this skirt is actually period also. Mm -hmm. It's donated by the um, McKellar family. And it will loop and swirl for you. Yes. As long as I can spin on All these right. skates and blades. All right, All right I'm ready to see it. Roll? Okay. All right, let me take the jacket off. <laughs> All right, this is this is the unveiling, everyone. This is very exciting. This is, this is epic. This is a fever dream with Karen Cortland Kelly. <laughs> epic here. Okay, let's see. So um, let me just... Now, you did have a business where you were how many different characters? Oh, many different characters. 3,000 bookings a year? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I have studied the fluff piece on you. Okay. All right. So let me get warmed up a little bit first, and I'll do my best to run on the toes. Maybe last, when my feet are used to the skate. Okay. So let's take us to 1882 in Vienna. Okay. In this Vienna. moment is epic in skating. This is where Axel Polson created the Axel. It's a three jump with one and a half revolutions, and he landed on his left back out. Do you like to imagine people like drinking tea as they're studying the figures? Like, what do you think they would do? Well, you know, it's just such beautiful art, culture, and everything combined that everybody loves. You yes. Know? You can't get better than this. I mean, art on the ice that lives, and we're jumping into history and moving it forward today so everyone can see this. So this is we're Is this like your own version here. of the Sound of Music tour? This is like well, really... Mean, I don't know. I think it's better than Sound of Music. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, you know, for me, that's a bucket list okay, item. Bucket, exactly. yeah, you yeah, know, I'm we all have our own dreams. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So then Franz Biberhofer, he never got the credit that was due to him because there were actually two flying figures in 1882. He did a three loop three counter change of edge and jump, which is a flying Choctaw, and he called it the Biberhofer figure. Now Axel Polson did name his Axel so after So a flying Choctaw, is that like the opposite of a mazurka, kind of? No, it's literally a flying Choctaw. I'll show you. It's very okay. interesting. So then Leopold Frey, neither of these gentlemen actually won, okay? Leopold Fry actually won with a spread eagle, a back outside eight, and a hand pirouette on a bent knee, which is a sit spin. So these are all of the flying figures that you're trying to promote in your fancy skating. You're trying to bring back this art form. And I want to 
I want to just put it in perspective to people. You had 1986 world champion, 88 uh, bronze medalist from the Olympics, Debbie Thomas, yes. who didn't even win your own competition because this well, is like the National Geographic of skating, yes, right I mean, here. It's, it's not. It's not my competition for the whole world, meaning world figure sport. I'm but you're an engine behind I'm it. I'm honored to be the chef de mission of education and sport. But what's amazing is there were spinning and flying figures even in 1882, which people don't realize. So we move all this knowledge forward in the most incredible way. So I will do my best for you in the vintage right. Tanya Henny skates to skate the Leopold Fry winning figure for you. I want to see this. Okay. All right. With no warm up, Mike. No warm up. <laughs> okay. right. You've Starting been, well, Karen, you've been warming up your whole life <laughs> for this <laughs> moment. Pirouette on a bent knee, Leopold Fry, 1882. Okay. Okay. You get a reskate. You okay. get to okay. You. you will talk, and I'll just ask okay. you questions. Okay. So, <laughs> you were in the '94 Olympics. Yes. I recently interviewed Katya Gordieva. Yes. Which program was better, Moonlight Sonata or the Flamenco? Which one is more iconic in oh, your opinion? Oh, iconic. I mean, Moonlight Sonata is so iconic. Yeah, but what about the short program? I, I mean, I, I you know. shared a you shared a camel phenomenal. spin mishap with Sergey. I know. I know. It was you know that's a phenomenal program too. I have to say. I mean, Katya. And Sergey and I go back. How about how the beginning when Marina would yell at them to grab the arms and they were, you know, in that fluff piece and the, the, they're in the war torn Russia. And I mean, so it, we go back all the way to 1985, Skate Moscow, because yes. I was sent as one of the six Americans to compete in Moscow in 1985 against Gordiev and Krinkov. They were fifth, we were sixth, actually. So our hearts. You know, are very connected into history. With are we all okay this. with Katya beating you at that competition by one place? Well, you know, I mean, we're, we, of course, we wanted to beat them, but, you know, in life, you have to be happy, win or lose. Okay. You just have to be grateful for what you did and only control what you skated. And I'm putting the back out today on vintage. And we are on the rink where Sergey last skated, and oh, this is like an honor to him. It is an honor. Okay, so I'm doing the back out today that we have both Fry did. And now, the hanging pirouette on a bit knee. Oh, yes. And up with the sun. Woo! You can really sell these outfits, Karen. This is, I, I love it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I believe that you should do the exit again and with a little bit of a fly. Can you push okay. through the toe? Um, oh, yes, with a little jump. Yeah. A ballet jump, if you will. Okay, let's try it. Let's do the upright. Side. I want to see some fancy skating. Okay. So, Karen, I get a lot of questions on social media. What is fancy skating? So, to you, can you show us an example of what you think some of the fanciest things are in skating? Well, okay, fancy skating combines fine performing decorative and recording art on a black ice stage. So it's every fancy element you can ever imagine that's already been done in skating, or new ones that you can actually make up. So nothing is limited, really, yeah. to fancy skating. Okay, well, yeah. show us your favorite fancy move that you think you want, you told me about the grapevine? Oh, the grapevine, oh gee, let's see, let's see. Well, we can hopefully do it in the skates, but I wouldn't say that's the fanciest skating move. I would just say we were breaking down the history with all that. But the grapevine, they actually knew how to use their feet in all these interesting ways to make all these interesting maneuvers. Like, oh, I don't want to my here. Da -da -da -da. So they knew how to like change their feet all around. And so, there's a double grapevine, the single grapevine, and then there's like the Pennsylvania grapevine, and there's all the stuff, other elements that you do. Well, I had a moment. Spins and everything in fancy skating. I mean, there's all kinds of elements. I mean, this competition is like a Flying Nina Bowers, even. Yes, I would like you to sh demonstrate that, oh. and I would also like you to demonstrate the Dua. What it had, the oh, pirouette? Oh, the pirouette, yes. So that's outfit. I believe that this dress calls for the pirouette figure. Oh, on these skates? I'll yes. Do, I'll do my dress, let's Okay, what am I doing first? The, the outside loop, inside the flexion? Yes. Okay. Where do you want to do it? I Skaters, take good. your place. What do we say? What do we say before a competition in oh, figures? Yes. Take your place. Take your place. Set your axis. And go. Okay, I haven't warmed up the loops in these skates yet. Outside loop. In. 
Inside loop. Woo! Okay. Inside edge. Inside edge. That's it. Out. Touch. Outside edge. Reset. Outside loop. Da-da. Inside loop. Da-da-da. Inside edge. Yes! Now you mentioned a flying Ina Bauer. Can yes, you... I haven't done that. <laughs> and a flying Choctaw, I believe. Uh, yes, oh, the flying Choctaw, yes. Okay, so Barbara Hopper did three loop three counter change of edge and jump. So let's just try to repeat that with no warm up here for you. This is incredible that they did again three turn, loop three, counter, okay, change of edge, large. This is a flying Choctaw there, it's actually how they did it. Okay. Yeah. Is that okay? I'm yeah, you gotta break this down for a normal person. There's a lot happening, no, Karen. Not happening. Maybe go right here because I'll stay small and then try to figure it out myself. So here, you switch with me. I'll go in here. And that way we get the signage? Yes, of, of course. Co of course. All right. Okay, so three loop, three counter change of edge and jump. Okay. Three turn, back loop, back three. Outside edge to outside edge, counter. Sorry, I'm a little slow. I haven't done this escape. Change of edge, flying chop top. And erect. And then he would do it again, and that's an incredibly difficult element in 1882. Yes! Yes! <laughs> and then, of course, Axel Poulton did his three jump with one and a half revolutions because they were doing their nice three turn. You know, they were doing these even in 1772, the three turns. Incredible. And then, about 50 years later, um, they actually d decided well, can I fly the three hop, land, and glide and actually survive it? And they did it. Incredible. We actually know that because it's in the document you just saw too. <laughs> so that's why it's called Flying Three. Right? And then he did the one and a half revolutions. Mm -hmm. You know, on, on the special figure competition. This year yeah. we only did the Fly Monster in homage to, yeah. to Brackett. We called it the Braxel because it was a back outside bracket with the wall strip. It's still very difficult yeah. to land on a clean back outside edge. Now, let's see you do this flying Ina Bauer. I think it's very Ina elegant, yes. and I think it's underutilized. It is underutilized. So the Ina Bauer, so they actually were doing this position, the fencing position, even in 1772. So this was actually not originally called I mean, this Ina could Bauer. be in the Paso Doble Compulsory Dance, Karen. Absolutely. So it was actually not called the Ina Bauer first. They were doing the fencing position in 1772. Yes. They actually were doing this, and the Spread Eagle at that time. Because we know we have the... A copy of the oldest English document um, still in existence today, the Treatise on Skating. And they Which is like in your basement, as one does, <laughs> right? Like this is. So, no, it's a world figure sports archive. So, we, they were doing the spread eagle, the um, fencing position, the flying mercury, which is you skate really, really, really fast and you lift the audience up with everything you've got in the bowl, bowl, bowl. This is the flying mercury. And they were skating this in 17. And they knew they would lift the audience up. Well, let's that. see the Ina Bauer. We didn't get to Bauer. see it. Ina Bauer with the, with the rotation. We'll do my best. So they were doing actually also flying Ina Bauer. Da -da, da -da. I would like to see Debbie Thomas do that next year. <laughs> do you think she could do it? I, I, definitely she can do flying Ina Bauer. Debbie needs to do it. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. That needs to be more dramatic. Can we do it like... I want you to imagine there's a spotlight. You're spotlight. on black okay. ice. Okay. Slow it down. Slow it down, yes. Then give it to me okay. like you're Sonia, and this okay. is your final number before the finale in her show. And I'll try to run on my toes for you. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So, like, I'm doing first the Ina Bauer. Yeah. Or the spread eagle. Yeah. Bauer. Don't you think Paul Wiley could do a flying Ina Bauer? Absolutely, Paul Wiley. And why he, isn't he doing well, it? Well, because no one knew about the flying Ina Bauer. That I think he could make night. it like masculine and dramatic Absolutely. and yes. So Ina Bauer got credit for something that was even done in 1772, but she laid back, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's try, let's do the Ina Bauer, you said, and then run on my toe pick. Yes. Okay. All right. So we're going to do the blind Ina Bauer the best we can here. Yes. Uh, on vintage Sonia Honey Skate. Woo! 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 Yes. It's fabulous. And then we're gonna do the slow 
Uh, we'll do the slow. Yes. Ah, uh, queen, queen. Yes, thank you, Karen. <laughs>